I would like to express a happy Lunar New Year to everyone as we enter the Year of the Tiger of 2022. Have you ever wondered how different the story and Liyue itself would be if Guizhong, the goddess of dust, had not died that faithful day during the disaster? If Zhang Li had in fact made it in time that day to protect and save his most treasured and closest of companions? Well, let's go through the looking glass again and find out as we look at what might have happened in an alternate timeline. But first... Before we begin though, if you enjoy Taebot's facts and wisdom, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. After the video is over, join us over in our community discord server, where we talk all about Genshin including lore. We're also going to be streaming on YouTube Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5pm PST. But anywho, with that said, let's open the Taebotionary and see what's been uncovered. We step back into the far ancient past before the founding of Liyue Harbor. Not much of the past has changed between Morax and how Guizhong met that fateful day in the beautiful field of the blooming lilies Guizhong held so dear. An agreement had been reached. Let our contract and alliance be set in stone, Zhang Li's words rang. Agreed. I hope this partnership proves beneficial to us both, and may the nation we build together prosper forever," Guizhong stated with a delighted smile. Morax can't help but feel some fascination towards this weak goddess. It quickly became apparent what she lacked in strength she made up for in her creativity, cunning, and tactful mind. It did not take them long at all to establish their slowly growing nation, nestled safely in the plains near the coast, quickly naming it Guili Assembly. And with the protection of Morax and the wisdom of Guizhong to lead it, prospered. However, one day, after having pleased the fear for years, the malice caused by the war growing worse did Morax approach his dear partner. The people cries of woe, what are we to do? Their threats and monsters they suffer in this age. What can we do, Guizhong? He asked in concern. It is a concern. The wrath of those slain grows by the day, and mortal plight cannot be ignored and swept to the wayside. Guizhong agreed with a thoughtful furrow of her brows. Her eyes lit up at remembering a tribe of one particular ancient race, nomadic in nature. That might work. What might work? Have you come up with a plan? Guizhong looked at him with a sly grin of confidence. A small tribe of an ancient race known as the Yaksha have recently settled down not far away. It seems one of their own was taken, and has been missing for quite some time. Find this young Yaksha, and he can take you to his tribe. Morax's eyes turned wide as he realized whispers of a divine adeptus that had been enslaved by another god. The Yakshas. Aren't they the race known for their abilities to purify, he asked. Yes. Find this Yaksha and his tribe, then bring them here. Offer them the right to sanctuary, and in exchange, offer their talents to purge. That is my advice to you, my dear dragon, Guizhong hummed. And so, Morax went and scored the areas Guizhong suggested, leading him to encounter the very god in question, freeing young Alatus. But alas, the damage to the young bird Yaksha had been done. Negative karma like a disease had seeped into this Yaksha. Taking him away to freedom's welcomed embrace, Morax granted Alatus his new name for his protection. In the fables of another world, the name Xiao is that of a spirit who encountered great suffering and hardship. He endured much suffering as you have. Use this name from now on. Xiao was soon reunited with his tribe and those near and dear. But the trauma of so many years of slavery had not faded. Only time would aid this, if at all. Overjoyed and feeling a need to repay this kindness, the Yakshas of this small tribe agreed to Morax's contract to protect his nation. Guizhong swiftly found a way and means to aid Xiao after a trip from overseas, having brought back some odd machines for her studies. Guizhong becoming one of the few Xiao became close to, some describing their bond to be like a mother and son, due to their banter, as Xiao dared not to try and cross her lest he face her temper. Fast forward once more to the fateful night of disaster. This would have been the night Morax and the Adepti locked in battle as the duo of two Hydro Gods flooded and brought death and destruction in their stormy wake. 
Swiftly, the people fled, but Guizhong and Morax, side by side, did all they could to ensure their safe escape. For days and nights without rest, this battle went on. Guizhong almost losing her life in the process. Badly hurt, but alive thanks to Morax's swift thinking and action. The battle was won, and they left to rejoin their people. Unfortunately, the damage to their people's homes was too much. So, further down they went with the aid of their fellow Adepti and the humans. Liyue Harbor was established. One day though, Guizhong and Morax were out just enjoying their time together, when they heard hushed rumbling whispers. I want to see the sun. Let me see the world above. That whisper led them to an astonishing find below ground. But it would prove to become their most valued friend, especially to Morax, a dragon named Ejdaha. But time can be cruel, and erosion shows no mercy. Morax was forced to seal his friend, gone mad. That had hurt him so, Guizhong had noticed. Guizhong made a note to keep a close eye on her most beloved partner, feeling concerned. Many centuries later, and now only Xiao remains of his tribe, Guizhong became that firm paternal anchor along with his lord. Respect between them, strong. Wang Xuin was established as a means to make Xiao feel more at ease, but also aid him while bringing him closer to the now prospering and rapidly growing city by the sea. Liu Wei Harbor has become huge, and easily rivals Fontaine and Shneznaya for their advancements, especially in medicine and trade. Guizhong now lives amongst their people, pretending to be nothing more than human, and ruled as the head of the Qixing with the intelligent Ningguang as her aide, dwelling within the Jade Chamber by day, and many rumors spread of where she wanders off to at night. But Gan Yu knows she returns to Morax's side. Nothing more, nothing less. Guizhong noticed Morax was not himself anymore. He seemed to be regressing. This became very apparent while they had one of their strolls through the city streets that night. Worried, she pulls him aside to where nobody could listen in. Guizhong, why would you bring us here? He asked. You're eroding, Morax. I can see the signs, and you're worrying me. She whispered tenderly, grabbing his hand. Morax's eyes grew wide in disbelief, but they grew solemn as he realized she was right. Is it... is it time? He wondered aloud. Morax, I advise you to step down as the Geo Archon. I can't bear to see you suffer like this. The Cryo Archon wants to speak with you. Hear her out. Make your decision then. Guizhong soothed, stroking his cheek, causing him to smile softly. I will. So, with Guizhong's help, a plan was soon hatched. They would put their beloved Liyue to the test, being one slightly for the theatrics herself, taking joy for the Adepti opera arts adopted by the humans, she schemed a grand display. Morax's grand final stage, as his death was to be staged at the Rite of Dissension. What she did not count on was an actingly familiar and faint aura. So faint, she had almost missed it. Her eyes landed on the traveler amidst the crowd. Well, well, so your child is here. Let's put them to the test as well thought Guizhong, watching from the shadows, as Ningguang started the ceremony. And so, the events of the Geo Archon quest play out as usual, but this time, Guizhong and Zhongli both aid Traveler in their own ways, Guizhong testing and pressuring Traveler constantly to see if they could be trusted, and see if their suspicions were fact. And they were, in Guizhong's eyes, proven when she witnessed the Traveler's deed against Osile with the aid of the Adepti, Qixing, and herself. Later, Guizhong and Zhang Li reveal their identities to Paimon and the Traveler, being the god of contracts and god of dust, respectively. Both were more than eager to answer their questions during the funeral. Guizhong then points them towards Inazuma, even encouraging the Traveler to keep interacting with Xiao when they could. Throughout the Traveler's journey, Guizhong proves to be a valued friend, mentor, and mother-like figure to Traveler. Guizhong as a unit is a geo-elemental catalyst healer, offering buffs in speed and even blinding her foes with her elemental burst. Her constellation resembles a phoenix rising from the ashes. Well, back out of the looking glass as we end this tale. I wish you all a happy lantern rite, and if you enjoyed this sort of alternate reality, maybe we'll do more in the future. With that said, I'm going to close the Tevachinary, and until then, I'll see you in the future for more Genshin Impact content and lore, and I also wish you a happy Lunar New Year.